Well, welcome to another episode of Conspiracy in the Force. My name is Conspiracy Kyle. Um, with me on the show today, a very special guest from the Upstate Unconventional podcast. I have Nico with me. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing great, Kyle. Thank you so much for having me on. Absolutely, man. You know, I, I appreciate, you know, you've, you've always given me lots of great comments and feedback and stuff on, on the pod. So I really, I definitely appreciate all your, all your support with everything um, for this podcast. For, for those that don't know about you or your podcast, give everybody a little bit of insight as far as what your um, topics you cover, you know, kind of guests you've had on your show. Yeah, uh, thank you for that. Um, my show is called Upstate Unconventional, and we pretty much cover anything that's unconventional. But my main focus is I always try to get a guest to come out with some type of paranormal experience or something they've had, because I believe everyone has had some type of paranormal experience, whether that be a synchronicity, a strange kind of prophetic dream or anything of that nature, or, you know, they've seen a ghost or classic paranormal stuff too. But it's amazing just talking to people, you get people talking long enough, they'll say, Oh, you know, I don't believe in the paranormal. I've never had anything. But there was this one time, that something weird happened. And I'm like, right. okay, go on, go on. But yeah, I cover everything from paranormal, some conspiracy stuff. Uh, right now I'm kind of on like a health kick with like holistic health and naturopathic healing and Ayurvedic stuff. But yeah, it's a lot of fun. I just started the show in June. It's awesome. Growing. Awesome. Yeah. You know, the health stuff I think is very important right now. You know, I think um, with, with everything going on, it's just important to, keep yourself mentally focused and keeping yourself mentally focused has a lot to do with health and what you eat and how you exercise. And, you know, you're talking a little bit about, about, you know, grounding and, you know, being in touch with nature. A lot, there's so many different elements of that that I think, um, you know, we talk about a lot of conspiracies and paranormal stuff, but that's also very, very important to keep your mind, your mind in tune to, to what's going on. Because if you have that, if you, if you have a healthy mindset, a healthy outlook, you know, good things happen for your life and you're able to kind of catch on to good and bad things happening in the world. Exactly. And the other thing too, is like when you're jumping down the rabbit holes and you're looking at all these conspiracy things and it's, it's terrifying a lot of it, you know? So you have to have this balance where you can step away from it, you know, step back. Even the paranormal stuff could get pretty dark sometimes. So it's, you just, it's good to have a fun episode where we got, you know, a yoga teacher on or someone just talking. So yeah, yeah, but it's funny, Kyle. I actually have a couple synchronicities with you, which okay. are kind of interesting. So yeah, hit me, hit me with it. So before we, I say, what what is your opinion on what a synchronicity is? Like the difference um, between a synchronicity or a coincidence? Um, a, a synchronicity is is kind of how I think about it. Is when when you and either another person or another group of people kind of simultaneously have a similar thought about something. And it's one of those things that, like, I noticed this sometimes when I was watching, like, you know, sporting events and stuff. I would want to, like, tweet or put out a message about, like, did everybody catch that one similarity to something else? And, you know, I'm like, but I didn't post it. But then I looked and other people were saying the same kind of kind of thing. So it's like, it, it's, it's weird because some of it makes you kind of feel weird a little bit because, like, you, you, you sometimes don't want to, at least for me personally, you don't always want to put yourself out there with that stuff because, you, you may not think it's going to come back to you, but a lot of times, you know, you're thinking that a lot of us share some of that similar collective consciousness and it, it, it's, it's out there. So, so what, what do you, how do you kind of describe it? I would say it, that it's very similar. You know, I've had experiences like that too, where I'll think of something or I'll like, like Monsters Inc. For example, I was watching that with my son and I was like, this is pretty dark, you know? <laughs> And I hadn't seen any memes about it. And as soon as I like said it out loud, I started noticing the memes pop up. And I was like, huh, why didn't I say <laughs> something in the first, <laughs> you know, right. you kind of get that little ego trip. You're like, damn, I should have said something. But yeah, it, it's, it's interesting. And I also think like the difference between a coincidence and a synchronicity is like a coincidence has no further meaning down the road. Mm -hmm. You know, like a synchronicity right. might seem like a coincidence at first, but then you you know, a day or so goes by or someone else says it to you and you connect with someone here or it has a meaning there, you know, it has a greater meaning down the road. Right. Yeah. I, I will say, you know, our, our friend, um, Matt T from the great deception podcast, he's here in the chat. And a few weeks ago, he said me and him had a synchronicity about, we had both posted a podcast episode that had a very similar thing. It's not like anything we had talked about. It's just on, on our own wavelength. We posted something very 
similar, talking about some similar themes, similar quotes. And it's, it's just crazy that, that some of that stuff happens because that's definitely not a, not a coincidence because it's all kind of, a lot of the stuff is on, is on our minds uh, all the time. So it's really interesting. Yeah, I mean, so is your thought, like, did you guys tap into something on that same frequency or that same wavelength? And completely unintentional, but you just, <laughs> you both had this spark at the same time. You know? Yeah, I, I'm trying to remember what it was. It was, um, I, I, gosh, I can't, I can't remember it off, off the tip of my tongue now, but it was just about a quote about somebody in history or, or something, something or other. I can't mm -hmm. think of it now, but it was just really strange that we had both kind of thought the similar thought and posted something about it within, the, within like a day, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's funny how that works, but all right. So maybe I'll just say that the two little stories I have, and it's just, it might be a synchronicity. It could just be a coincidence, but on uh, June 3rd of this year, I was watching the Han Solo movie, Solo, with my stepson. Mm -hmm. And we were watching it, and there's, like, this scene, you probably know it, where uh, they're, like, on a bridge or a railway or whatever, and one of the rebels is kind of surrounded, and she, like, suicide bombs herself, you know, and blows up. And I, like, looked to my wife. I was like, that, that's, she was like, that's pretty dark, you know, for, like, a Disney movie. <laughs> I was like, yeah. it is. And then I started thinking, like, they really do kind of paint these rebels as like terrorists in a lot of ways, you know, yeah. even though the empire is the bad guys, they even like the way they dress, like their attire, their military yeah. gear, they kind of look like, you know, middle Eastern terrorists sometimes. Yeah. And I was like mm -hmm. the camouflage, I mean, like return of the Jedi in the forest, you know? Yeah. yeah. I, I can, I can definitely see that, that symbology there. So I'm like talking with her and I was like, man, I would really, I was like, there's got to be like some type of conspiracy podcast or something that talks about these similarities, because like, even though the empire is the bad guys, they kind of push it in this subtle tone that it's like, they're doing what's best for the, for the galaxy right. and whatnot. And she was like, I'm sure there's something, you know, there's a billion podcasts out there and whatever. And then the next day I'm at work and I put on this, you know, my, one of my favorite shows, tinfoil hat, and it's your episode. <laughs> and I was like, are you kidding wow. me? <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> that's all. That's awesome though. It, it's so strange how those things happen. You know, when you're in that, when you're in that mindset, especially when you're in a mindset of wanting to learn more to want to, you know, find out different thoughts and different theories about things, how those things just come to you. It's, it's wild. It's strange. And then, so that aired on June 4th of this year. Five days later, I put out my first episode on June 9th. And now exactly five months later from when that episode aired, uh -huh. we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> now we're getting into the, the gematria and, and kind of stuff there, man. Yeah, I don't know if there's any number significance to it. It's just, it's funny to me. It's like five days after I heard your episode, I, I put my first one out. And now five months later, we're doing this. So it's, it's kind of cool. Nice, nice. <laughs> you know we'll have to we'll have to put it on the counter for for five years from now since we did the five days the five months so five years from now we're gonna have to do something together so we'll have hopefully to hopefully we do something <laughs> before that but yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> we'll so have a five year I, reunion <laughs> <laughs> i will say too about what you mentioned earlier about like the re like the rebels you know uh one thing an idea i've been like kicking around is that you know in some of the newer movies like did you see that rogue one movie that came out a few years yeah. ago yeah. You, you know, they portray the rebels in that movie as like people that like, like, like similar to what you saw in the Han Solo movie, people that are willing to do whatever they, whatever needs to be done by any means necessary to combat this evil, even if it is evil itself. Like in the right. one opening scene, like the one rebel informant kills another rebel informant just because like they're cornered and he's like, got to get out of there. So he just blasts this guy and, and, and runs away. And it's like, that's, I mean, it's cold-blooded murder, and, like, you, you have to kind of weigh that out. It's like, at what point do they become the thing that they're fighting against? So it definitely plays a little bit in that gray area, you know, some of these newer movies. Yeah, and just the whole, I mean, I, I'm going to say something very controversial here to a lot of Star Wars fans, but um, I actually like the prequels. I grew up yeah. on the prequels, and, uh, I, I mean, I watch them now, and the acting's terrible, and there's some cheesy effects and whatnot, but... I really enjoyed them and yeah i liked how they took because the old ones i love them too i mean they're timeless they're never going to go out of style but there's a there's a little bit of like an 80s corniness to them that you know there's that charm but yeah. like my my kids don't like the older ones as much right I, I just love that kind of darker undertone of the prequels that just 
Oh man, like, I'll tell you what. There's just so much. There's just you know, I I I watch them all the time, and I, I read all the novels recently. And like I would I would say for anybody that hates the prequels, go uh, go back and like read like the companion novels because so much um, stuff kind of gets buried that he really wanted to show. You know, like especially when you get to Revenge of the Sith, right? When Anakin is turned to the dark side, one of the pe people have this hang up that like it was so quick. All of a sudden, he's like kneeling before the Emperor and like. Well, what the hell? But like, if you read the Revenge of the Sith novelization, you get into Anakin's head throughout the whole time. And he's starting to develop this really serious egotistical mindset of how much better he is than anybody else. And then so it, it, it boils up to a certain point. So it makes a lot more sense logically. So I would re recommend anybody go check out those those novels because they have a lot of, you know, deleted scenes and stuff in there, too, which add a lot more put more meat on the bones. And and plus, you know, I talk about it all the time, you, you know, it's like this how this totalitarian government you know rises to power i mean it's it, it's crazy all these steps that they lay out that you you see happening in our world from from time to time whether it's soviet russia or nazi germany or even today with with stuff going on no it's it's amazing and you know it, i like the lightsaber scenes when i was younger because they came out when i was in like fifth and sixth grade you know but yeah watching them again i'm watching them with my like stepson and it was like huh <laughs> This, this, this is hitting a little too close to home. <laughs> it, it, but that's, but that's, I think why it works is like, you know, it's, it's like a lot of animated movies and stuff. Like it works on two different levels, you know, like, you know, when you're an adult, you can see it one way you're a kid, you can see it one day, one way it works for, it works for everybody on multiple levels, which I think is why the prequels work. And I will say, you know, I think a lot of people are coming back around on the prequels, you know, after the, the sequel trilogy came out right. because of how, <laughs> you know, how hobbled together that was. And I think there's a lot of good stuff in there, you know, good and bad, like, like anything. But I think people just um, over the lens of time, you know, 20 years ago now are able to go back and kind of look at it with a fresh lens and say, you know what? It may not have, like you said, like, I agree, like the acting was, was pretty bad. Um, some of the green screen stuff could have been more physical sets and things to that effect. But it was like a cohesive story throughout you know, wh whether you like the dialogue or how it worked, but like he had a, he had a mind, he had a plan at the start of where it began and where it ended, which, you know, we didn't really see with that new Disney trilogy. So you're kind of willing to let some of the other stuff slide a little bit because, and like you said, it's, it's like a campy kind of fun too. You know, some of the, mm -hmm. some of the cheesy stuff is like funny, cheesy, you know, it's like uh, some stuff is just cheesy, cheesy. And it's just like, uh, like cringe, hard to watch, but some of, some of the stuff in there is pretty funny, funny, corny. And, uh, and then, of course, The Mandalorian, man. I, I actually loved that show. I thought it was great. And then the whole controversy with Yoda eating the fish eggs. <laughs> Did you hear about that? <laughs> yeah, people were getting mad about that. Yeah, like they were like connecting it to abortion or something like that. Or you know, genocide. <laughs> oh, genocide. Yeah, no. it's like... You can't, you can't win. You can't win with you some can't, of You can't ever win. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> Yeah, Kyle, I wanted to ask you, have you had any paranormal experiences? You know, I've been thinking about that ever since we kind of uh, booked this talk here. And I, I, I don't necessarily know that I have, but I know that I've had, and, and you had mentioned this in a, um, something you put on Instagram a few weeks ago, that the definition of paranormal is probably not always what people attribute it to. Like, like you said, like most people just think it's like a ghost story, right? Like that, that's the thing. But that's probably 1%, right, of the kind of paranormal stuff. Like, it's like, um, you mentioned like dreams, right? Dreams are, are technically a paranormal event because it's something that's happening, but it's also not happening at the same time. It's like your mind is literally playing a trick on you while you're sleeping. And I can't point to any specific dream because every, I'm the kind of person, once I wake up, like it's gone. I don't remember any of them, but, but some of them are very, very vivid. You know, it's like I'm living in, like, I think everybody can attest to that. It's like, you're living in a world that's similar to yours, but it's so also so different. And there's really no way for me to ex explain it. I don't know. What is your kind of thought about? So, so I guess the, the short answer is I, I don't think so, but maybe I've, 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 I've caught glimpses of, of things from time to time that maybe I, you know, just, just wrote off as, Oh, just to, you know, I'm tired or it's this or it's that, but nothing I can point to specifically, but I'm going to kind of ponder on, on th and think about that. Um, yeah, to see I'm if gonna, there's anything I can. I would say, I bet you by 
not maybe not the end of the episode, but at some point after our conversation, you'll message me and be like, you know, there was this one time I definitely <laughs> this happened. And but back to dreams, I agree with you. It's like, how do you explain we science still really doesn't have a solid answer for what dreams are. You know, they'll tell you it's just your brain processing all the images you've seen throughout the day. But then there's dreams where you communicate with dead loved ones or there's dreams where you're yeah i've had so many reoccurring dreams that it's almost like i'm living on another in another dimension almost or a different reality and it's like you said very similar to this i'm myself but there's just little things that are tweaked and when i right. go back into the dream it's like i'm it's like i woke up in that dream and now i'm living that life again it again. almost feels wow. like you know and yeah there's a whole history in these dreams that I know in the dream, but when I come back to this reality, I, I can't remember any of it. I can remember little glimpses and things like that, but, um, yeah, I, yeah, I, I will, I will attest to like the one about like, you know, dead loved ones. Like my, my mom passed away. It's been over like, you know, 13, 14 years now and she'll pop up in there all the time, all the time. And it's, and it's never like I wake up sad. It's like, it, it was just like living in, in that universe. It, it wasn't like in that universe, I didn't know she was gone. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was just like, right. you were just living your normal life. And then, you know, you know, I, I just thought about some stuff, you know, just in the past minute. Um, the other one that I see all the time is, you know, back when I was probably 15, 16 years old, my dad worked at an accounting firm in our town. And my first job was, he said, Hey, do you want to work as like a janitor in here and just go around and empty trash cans and food I'm like, sure why not you know just something some dude make a few bucks here and there so I will have dreams where I'm like in that because like whenever I did that office cleaning stuff it was always at night it's like eight nine o'clock at night so I'm the only one in there it's pitch you know pitch black outside and everything so like some dreams I have I'm just kind of like going through there um un unintentionally but it's just like and there's no rhyme or reason to it I think there are some people that come in and out of it but like it's just like, I'm just kind of walking through it. And I think that's one thing that you know, my wife says about to help herself fall asleep is she will like remember her, like her childhood house and just kind of walk through all the rooms and the doors and the stairs and stuff. And it helps her fall asleep. But it's like, for me, it's like when I'm asleep, that's when I'm thinking that stuff. Yeah, that's really interesting. And I wanted to ask you about the dreams with your mother. Um, mm -hmm. Do you, in do you interact with her in those dreams? Is she talking or is she more of like a, like kind of NPC background character that's just kind of there? Um, you know, I think it's kind of a little, a little of both. Mm -hmm. Like I, some of it, I, I, you know, it's kind of funny. You said I would probably remember some stuff. And of course I already am. My, my mind's already going. Some of it is I'm kind of just like passing through and she's like maybe talking to somebody over in the, in the distance or something. Um, but yeah, I don't know if it's, if it's ever, if it's ever direct. Um, but I'm going to try to, if there's a way to, to focus on something in your dream, let me know if you have any tricks or secrets because, <laughs> Yeah, I'd, I mean, I'd love to. I would love to try to focus in on that if I could. Yeah, there's there's little things you can do. Just kind of like repeat like mantras before you go to bed. Like I will remember my dream, or you know, just kind of kind of like the movie Inception in a way. Have it something that you can touch in the dream. Okay. This gets more into like lucid dreaming, but uh -huh. it makes them more vivid and everything like that. But yeah, the only reason I ask is because I've had dreams with my grandfather in them, and it's been both types. You know where. Uh, he'll just be a background character. He'll be, you know, standing on a boat or whatever because he loved to fish and things like that. But then there's other dreams where he'll come up and tell me something and I can never remember it. Hmm. You know, it's like I remember it in the dream and I'm sure somewhere it's buried in my subconscious, but I can never actually remember it. I'm sorry about the noise. Can you hear that in well, the background? That's okay. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Um, yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's weird. I'm going to try to see if I can try to focus in on some of that stuff because I would love to remember some of it, but also at the same time, like some of that stuff, like maybe it would be, it, it wouldn't be as good as you thought it would be if, if you were, if you remembered it, maybe it would make you more sad or something, you know? So maybe, so maybe that's why my brain just kind of cuts it off because they're like, you know, you were, we went through enough at that time. Like there's no need to kind of relive it and kind of feel bad about it. But so all I remember now is that like that she was in it. It wasn't anything, yeah. you know, positive or negative, just kind of neutral. Right. And yeah, it's always anytime I have like very vivid dreams, I've noticed it's times of high stress or high anxiety throughout my life. So 
I'll actually jump into one. Have you heard any of my things on other podcasts? Yeah. Um, tell me about, tell me about some of your stories. I want to hear them. Okay. So I, I'm just going to tell you this one because I see that Darth Maul head popping up in the background. <laughs> and, um, this one, this one was kind of interesting and you know, everyone will just tell you, Oh, it's just a dream. Don't, you know, you're overreacting, whatever. But I used to be an English teacher before I stopped doing that and started a lawn care landscaping company and doing what I do now. But so it was back in 2013 and it was the last night of my student teaching and I had to turn in my portfolio the next day. And it was just, you know, I was up to like four o'clock in the morning getting all the work done. And I finally finished it up and whatever. And I put my head down on the pillow and I passed right out. And when I passed out, I went into this completely vivid, lucid dream where I could literally control everything in the dream. I was running around. I was jumping through the air, basically flying. And I was just running and taking these huge leaps. And the very last leap I took, I actually hit my head on what felt like a dome in this dream, <laughs> in the wow. sky. And I blacked out. And then I woke up and I was in this uh, on this couch it was a white couch in a white room loaded you know glass everywhere very like movie like scene but you know beautiful woods around the outside everything like that and I'm sitting on this couch white blankets and everything and I go to get up and this like older woman comes over to me and she's dressed like a nurse but she's just wearing all white you know and she says you know oh, oh you know don't get up yet you, you were in a car accident you need to stay you're you're resting and I was like, what are you talking about? I was dreaming, you know, I was having a dream and I, where am I? And she's like, oh, you're, you're fine. You know, don't worry. You're just in a terrible car accident. And I'm really sorry about these dogs upstairs. I have two oh, German Shepherd puppies. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it doesn't affect the sound too much. That's all good. It's all good. But um, so she's telling me like, no, you have to stay down. And I'm like, no, I'm, I feel fine. I don't feel anything. And as I'm like telling her I want to get up and leave she's getting angrier and her face is starting to change a little bit and and uh so the the more defiant I get in this dream the more her face is morphing and it's turning into almost like a dark Maul looking face wow and um it was like a cross between Darth Maul and like the Urukai orcs from Lord of the Rings. Okay. You know? Wow. Yeah. And that's disturbing. You know, it was disturbing. <laughs> and it was absolutely terrifying because this was such a real dream. I could feel her breath. You know, I could kind of smell everything. And it just, you saw the face morphing and it, it didn't look anything like it was so unnatural that it was natural looking, if that right. makes any sense at all. Uh -huh. Right. And, she just um you know i was like finally i'm getting up and leaving and then that's when her face like fully morphed into this thing and it was like a demonic voice like you're not leaving and i got up and i ran towards the door and as i'm running towards the door i blacked out again and i woke up a, a second time and this time i was in a conference meeting like in a conference room and there were either 10 or 12 uh, the best way I can describe is like a generic politician. Just okay. Like if you saw in a movie, like they had like suits sitting, just sitting around the table. Yeah, yeah. suits uh -huh. sitting yep. around, black black and white suits, just a bunch of older guys. Think and, about like the, like the original RoboCop movie, like all those yeah. dudes sitting around in the conference room. Yeah, yeah, and they're just sitting there, and they're handing me a piece of paper, and, and when I snap into this reality, uh, they're handing me this contract, and I'm about to sign it, and. Right as I'm about to sign is when I became conscious in this this state. And I was like, I, I couldn't read what was, it was like, I don't know if it was in another language or if it was just blurry. I couldn't read what the contract said. It, it, and it was probably all, like that. It was probably like that really tiny, fine print. Yeah, the fine, the fine print. Every, <laughs> every drug commercial. Like, that is like mm -hmm. what, what is that? <laughs> and yeah, and it was like, I'm just about to sign it. And then I, I'm like, wait, 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 what am I signing? No, I'm not doing this. And they all kind of stop and look and they're like, what are you talking about? We were, we were just about to sign. Like, this is a mistake. What do you mean you're not going to sign it? And I start getting, you know, that really uncomfortable feeling. 
it, it's so realistic. I mean, this felt right. real, you know, I could yeah. feel like the skin crawling on the back, you know, when you get the hairs on the back of your neck standing up and everything. And how many years, and how many years ago was this that it happened? This was in 2013. Wow. So same thing. I'm like, no, I'm not signing this. I need to, I, I, I don't even know what it says. Like, I need to know what going on here and they're like no we already agreed like everything's in motion you need to sign this you know contract or whatever it is and as i same thing i start to refuse and their faces start to morph you know and the same thing they kind of look like that darth maul orc looking thing but what was so interesting is they all had like a different it almost looked like it was like face paint on them in certain patterns and they all had a different color. There was like one that was turquoise, one that was red, one that was orange, one that was silver. And their faces are morphing. And by the end, they're like, you're signing this contract in these like demonic voices. I could feel everything. And I just like pushed myself away from the table. And then I woke up for the third time in my bed in sleep paralysis. And I couldn't wow. move for like a good three or four minutes. Wow. <laughs> That dude, that that's wild, dude. You, you know what? One thing I just thought about, um, a crazy synchronicity, I guess, with you know, that was back in 2013, with what's happening over the past few years. Just think about people that you interact with over the past few years, um, that want you to do things like wear masks and take this and do that. Yeah. When you start to tell them no, their true essence starts to come out, yeah. right? So that is just wild that you kind of um have already kind of I don't want to say foreseen or prophesied, but it's like, I think it's just in, in general, you know, you start to see people's true colors when, when you don't do what they want you to do. And that's, that's never more present than in the past two years to so, do. That's, yeah. that is, that's an amazing uh, sequence of events. That, that's like movie quality, like um, symbolism there. It was terrifying. And I've talked to a few people about like what the meaning of it could be, because it felt very demonic you know and you know some people are like oh well you were handing in your paperwork to be a student teacher and I never really wanted to be a teacher I kind of was forced into college by my parents mm -hmm. and uh so they were like oh it was just you know you're signing the contract to become a teacher basically and you didn't really want to do it and that's it was one of your biggest fears okay cool whatever maybe but this these characters have appeared in probably six or seven different dreams throughout wow from 2013 to about 2016. And what's interesting is once I met my wife, the sleep paralysis stopped. Okay. So I had, I had sleep paralysis from the time about 2003. So I was about 11 years old and it was, wow. it started happening when we moved into this uh, new house at that time. And the house was haunted. It's, there's only like, I, I hate saying the word haunted, but there was a lot of very bad energies in this place. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, my brother saw a go it, my brother had much more experiences in this house. There was a ghost of an old woman or an apparition or something that would come into his room at night and would just kind of hover over his bed. And it's interesting because we knew me and my brother were friends with the grandchildren of the people my parents brought the house from. And he was describing this to the younger kid one night. And he was like, oh, that sounds like my great grandmother. And he was like, did she live there? He's like, yeah, she lived in the room that's all the way at the end of the hall. And she she what? died in there. And oh, wow. that was my brother's room. <laughs> wow. Man. And, you know, I, I was kind of naive to the paranormal stuff then. I, I was, you know, starting to get into sports and things like that. And I never equated the sleep paralysis with like paranormal you know i just yeah. figured it was having nightmares or whatever and it wasn't until i actually moved out of that house and would go back to visit in 2016 that i realized like how bad the energy actually was and how you could just kind of so you could just kind of feel it as soon as you walked in that yeah. just something just something felt like slightly wrong something slightly off yeah and it's so weird because like you know growing up in there we had this basement and the basement flooded like oh, about a month after we moved in. And supposedly there was never any water problems or anything like that. But you would, you would just hear people call your name from the basement every once in a while. <laughs> and it would sound just like my dad. And you'd like run down and be like, hey, what? And no one's down there. Nothing. Or you'd be down there 
you know, it's basically like a storage room. You'd be down there looking for something, a shirt, whatever. And it just, it always felt like there was something right behind you, kind of breathing down your neck, hovering behind you. And it was just bizarre. And another strange thing that I never put two and two together, but after doing like some research on this, it was like, we would get dead animals. It was a, it was a raised ranch on six, six acres of land. There was about an acre of woods behind us and then just a five acre field in front. And the house sunk about a foot, almost now nah, about seven or eight inches from the time my parents bought it in 2003 to when they moved out in 2017. And I never put this together, but we would get weird animal interactions around the house all the time. Hmm. Like we'd find dead possums everywhere. Birds would just die randomly. We had a wow. situation with a rabid raccoon that had porcupine quills stuck through its face. It was like <laughs> it was like the night of the living dead. This thing came walking <laughs> out and it was terrifying because, you know, we had dogs and stuff we didn't want. But yeah, that is, it's interesting. So that's a big part of my show is like a lot of this stuff I didn't realize until later on in life, like how weird that was because you just grow up with yeah. it and you're like, OK, this it is what it is. You know, you don't, you just think you're a weird person, but. <laughs> um, and then, and then when it goes away, and then when it goes away, you're like, Oh, this is a, I like this. I like this better. <laughs> yeah. So like, like I was saying, like when I met my wife in 2016, the sleep paralysis stopped. Now I had experienced this from 2003 till 2016. So 13 years of my life was, it wasn't every night, but it was at least once a week, you'd get some type of uh, experience with that you'd wake up and sometimes you're yeah, just and how how long does it last for you like you mentioned in, in your the lucid dream it was a few minutes but how long kind of does it last when you, when you had it? it 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 varied you know sometimes it'd just be a couple seconds and sometimes it'd be almost about 10 minutes it would feel like wow. and i don't know if i mean anytime you're doing something that's scary or highly intense like a minute feels like an hour yeah, so it felt true. like an eternity when that was going on, but there was different, there's all different types. Have you ever experienced sleep paralysis at all? I, I don't, I, th I think maybe I have, but maybe I just, it, it's one of those things where, like you said, with the paranormal stuff, we've all experienced weird things that have happened, but if you don't, if, if you can't put a name to it or like a description to it, maybe like you just write it off. So maybe there have been times where I've just been kind of just like frozen in fear or something in bed that may be similar to sleep paralysis. Maybe not, but um, I'll have to kind of think about that and look up kind of the definition and some of the symptoms just, just to see, because there, there could be something there, but it, but like you said, like you dealt with it all the time. So like you, you knew what it was. So I think if, if I have something similar, I'd probably be more quick just to write it off. It's just, Oh, whatever. But right. um, I'm going to think about that a little bit. Now, let me ask you this. So you yeah. said in 16, the, um, that some of that sleep paralysis went away. What about the lucid dreaming? Do you, have you, you mentioned that one in 2013. Have you had other ones since then? Has some of that continued on to this day? So it, it has and it hasn't. It's very weird because once I met my wife, the stuff, a lot of the paranormal stuff went away. But there's been a few really kind of significant, crazy uh, experiences that have happened with her and what's interesting is the times that they have happened like she's sound asleep it's almost like she's in her own little like protective bubble and like I'm frozen on the bed trying to scream out and stuff and she's she can't hear me or uh, I'll tell you uh, one story that just it, it was absolutely insane uh, because at the end of it like I got up and ran out of the bed to check in my son's room and like my wife didn't wake up through any of this and normally she will wake up from anything but i don't know how much time do we have kyle because i can tell you a bunch of crazy experiences oh oh we got we got we got we got time we got okay, time cool. let, let me hear it all right so I'll, this one happened in 2020 so i had from 2016 to 2020 i had maybe one or two kind of experiences with sleep paralysis and they were very uh minute like nothing major. And I, I will say too, like there's all different types of sleep paralysis. Um, a lot of it, you just wake up and, and science, you know, mainstream science will tell you that um, it's just your, your, your brain woke up before your body does, you know? And 
that explains some of the things, but I've had experiences where there are actual large black masses in the room <laughs> kind wow. of staring at you from the corner or on top of you, literally feeling like they're crushing, you know, every bone in your body. And, you know, I eventually learned that through accident, just saying Jesus Christ, like <laughs> it, it, it snapped out of it. And again, I don't know, is that mind over matter? What it, what is that? But anytime I would say Jesus Christ, and that's all I had to say was the, the name. And I'm not, I wasn't particularly religious at the time or anything like that, but it just, it would, it would work. So I just kind of learned how to cope with that in these like lucid dreams. Like if things got too bad, I could just have that, you know, kill switch, like Jesus help. And it right. would go away. But then again, I don't know, is that just me being conscious in the dream and my consent or whatever saying like, Nope, not going to do this anymore. But what's interesting is that last one with the the boardroom and everything that's what kind of led me down my whole uh conspiracy rabbit hole you know because i started looking into the bible i started looking into the book of enoch with the fallen angels and some people have mentioned that maybe those were like archons or who knows what it could have been was it your spirit guides was it demons i have no real answer for it all i can tell you is it was a terrifying experience and it led me down to look into all these conspiracies which led me to uh well it actually led me more down a spiritual route first i started looking right. to the bible and everything and then once you start getting into that book of enoch whoa well why are there books missing from the bible let's look into that oh they took it out oh there was a council back in like 300 ad that took all these books out and that leads you down the conspiracy hole and before you know it you find out the queen is a lizard person and <laughs> everything else <laughs> In, but, the, in um, the Bible, the Bible one, I will, I will say um, real quick is that, you know, I, I have a very, you know, religious Christian background, you know, you know, went to church my whole life until I, you know, kind of moved out on my own and kind of it's, it, it's, it's fallen off. But like you said, with getting back into the conspiracy stuff, I'm starting to try to rediscover like the spirituality aspect and in a different way than I had before, because like you said, with why are there books missing from the Bible? Why, why did all these secular Kings have um, the right to you know, yay or nay on what, what was published, you know, and it gets back into also, you know, all the things about history and, you know, how much of history has been falsified and, you know, doctored and things like that. So it's making me think about that stuff in a whole new mindset. So I'm definitely kind of on a, you know, kind of kind of like yours but kind of an inverse right like yours was spirituality and then into conspiracy so mine is kind of conspiracy now into 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 spirituality so it's uh the book of enoch is very interesting i've read some of it i need to go back and read and read it's all a of tough it read. <laughs> yeah yeah a lot of the old testament kind of king james version stuff is very it is very hard even you know kind of real, real funny i want to get back to your story here but just kind of a quick mm -hmm. side note you know a few years ago my wife and i we were starting to get back into reading the Bible and things like that. And we, we got an app, which, which had like um, kind of like an audiobook version of the Bible where like this guy in like this thick British voice was, would read you the Bible. But like back in like the first few books of the Bible, there's so many chapters that are just going through like the genealogy yep. of, you know, to get from this story to this story. Like there was like a hundred generations of people and like, he's going through these names and like, we made the mistake of like laying in bed, listening to it. And like, we noticed like, we're like, we're falling asleep as he's reading like and like and then he was the son of this person that he was on a verse and then yep. this person died and i'm like i'm like maybe we should just kind of skip forward a little <laughs> bit i don't i don't think that this is really adding much so uh but but yeah definitely trying to get back into into the spirituality discover what it what it means for me so um anyways uh, go ahead continue on all right so anyway i gotta backtrack a little bit too so that led me because I wasn't raised particularly religious. My mother was a uh, Greek Orthodox. She tried to have me and my brother baptized. I was like five years old at the time <laughs> and it, it just wasn't pushed. And so I, I, I always believed in a higher power in a God and everything like that. But in around 2013, I started looking into the Bible and I got into this kind of Hebrew roots movement. Have you heard anything about that mm -mm. before? No, no, I haven't. So it's, it's Christianity, but they believe the whole, idea behind it is that the old testament or the new testament was written after jesus died so what was jesus actually teaching he would have been teaching the old testament 
and the mm-hmm. Torah, specifically the Torah. So I got really heavy into that. I went kosher for like four years, you know, before I met my wife and I got pretty deep into it. You know, I wasn't, it wasn't like a great, <laughs> you know, I didn't go to any church or anything like that, but I was just doing all this studying and it really, it, it, it didn't make me spiritual. I'll say it made me kind of like elitist in a way. And I thought like I was better than people because I was following the strict set of rules that no one else was doing. And I was better than all these people that didn't know the truth. And I'll just say that's like the farthest thing from the truth. And right. you can't me personally, I, you can't take the Bible literally, especially some of the stuff in like the old Testament and whatnot. But um, I broke out of that and it's just been, because I think there's a huge difference between spirituality and religion. You right. Know? Yes. hundred percent. The organized religion part is what is what turns people off. Not necessarily like the underlying principles I think are sound in, in mm-hmm. most religions, you know, the underlying yeah. principles are, you know, uh, being good, being good to your neighbor, you know, loving, loving God, praying, like all that kind of stuff. But like, exactly. w- when it gets organized, it gets, it, it gets muddled up and people, take it uh, and use it for their own purposes. And you see that in in Christianity, Islam, every, every religion. Mm -hmm. So once I met my wife, I kind of got out of that, but I was still in this whole, like all this stuff is evil. You know, yoga is demonic. Crystals are demonic, all this stuff. And my wife was big into that. So caused a little bit of a riff in in the early years, but once my son was born, everything kind of changed and I got sober and all that good stuff, but I didn't have any more sleep, uh, sleep paralysis. And then one day in 2020, it was August 4th, um, I came home from work, normal day, a little windy outside, but nothing crazy. I come home, say hi to everyone. And I, the dog's barking. So I go to open up the back sliding door to let him outside. And as soon as I opened the door, I heard what sounded like a shotgun blast go off and the lights went out in the house and I happened to look up because we have a telephone pole. Like we have a mm-hmm. fence in our backyard and then there's a telephone pole right on the sidewalk. I happened to look up right at the right time and open the door at the exact right moment that it blew one of the breaker arms right off the uh, wow. telephone pole. So we lost power. So I was like, okay, that's weird. And you know, my stepson was like freaking out and it's like four o'clock in the afternoon. So it was still light out, but yeah. he was panicking from it. You know, we called the company and everything. They're like, it should be on, you know, by tomorrow morning. Okay, cool. So we went out, we got like Chinese food and just had a normal night. And uh, so my stepson was 10 at the time. My my son was three. So we drove around. My son fell asleep. I put him in his room. No big deal. He was sleeping, but my stepson was just freaking out, like would not go in the house. And I, I have tons of solar lanterns and candles and all this stuff so the house was lit up it wasn't you know wasn't anything too bad but i was like whatever dude you can just sleep on the floor in our room because he was really terrified of this for whatever reason and nothing to really do so we all go to bed i wake up in the middle of the night i and this is something i've kind of trained myself to do is always look at the clock Anytime I have one of these like sleep paralysis type experiences, just from having it for so long and looking into significances of times and whatnot, Mm -hmm. um, I always have a clock right by my bed. But for this particular time, I don't know why I didn't look at the clock. And uh, I woke up and I heard the room to my son's or the door to my son's room open up and he comes in our room all the time at night or used to, at least he would just come and walk around and you'd hear him walk in. He'd open our door, climb up in the bed, you know, kick me in the nuts, climb over (laughs) top of me, get in between me and my wife. So this was not like an uncommon thing. And I was just like, okay, whatever. But I, I didn't get up. And I, I still don't know to this day if I was in sleep paralysis or if there was something kind of stopping me from lifting my head up and really looking, but so I hear that. I hear him walking into our room. I hear our bedroom door open. I hear his, you know, fat little feet flopping on the floor. He comes around, climbs up on top of me. Like I said, knees me right in the groin. And I'm like, okay. And he gets in between me and my wife. And again, this happens so often. I didn't think to like really pay attention to what was going on. And 
he's in between us and he starts kind of kicking me. And again, not very uncommon. Right. But I hadn't looked at him. And he's he's kicking me and he just keeps kicking me. And I'm like, what the heck? But I'm still not really moving. I'm still kind of in this weird awake trance state. And then <clears throat> finally, I mean, he's kicking me so much. I feel myself sliding off the bed and I'm like trying to catch myself. What? Wow. And <clears throat> so finally I like build up as much like strength or courage, whatever it was to kind of turn and look and say something to him. And when I turn to look, it's not my son in the bed. It was this huge, just black mass. Just like, like a blob, like just no like a black definition. Mass. It almost it kind of reminded me of like a ring wraith. And I'm sorry for all the Lord of the Rings references, but I, oh no, I'm I love the Lord of the Rings references. <laughs> I, we'll, we'll have to we'll have to do a, a Lord of the Rings episode one of these days. I, there's Definitely. so much so much meat on those bones there too. Definitely, but it it was similar to like a ring wraith or like Voldemort in a in a way, kind of slithering, but mostly no shape. It wasn't a cloak or anything like that. It was just this big black mass sitting in the middle of the bed. And wow. as soon as I turned and looked at it, it started screeching. Oh, my and, God. And it was like, the best way I can describe it is a heavy metal pig squeal mixed with two leaf blowers just blasting you on both sides of the head. Oh my and God. as I'm, so I'm like stunned by this thing, almost like an infrasound type deal or whatever. And I'm staring into this thing and I literally feel my face like, the atoms and particles in my face getting like sucked into this mass and i'm just like doing everything in my power to like hold on to the bed and again i yeah. can't and then i notice like i can't move at all so i'm just like clinging to whatever and it feels like it's sucking me in and again i just you know, i hadn't had a sleep paralysis experience in like almost three years at this point and I'm just clinging to the bed. The noise is insane. I'm freaked out. And, and just in my head, I scream the name, Jesus Christ. And then it just poof, like a little puff of smoke just disappeared. I shot up and I was like out of breath. Like, holy shit, you know, what the it, hell? And your wife, happened? she was asleep the whole time? Sound asleep. And I get up and I run right into my son's room just to check. And he's sound asleep on his bed. Yeah. So, so what do you, what do you think? Do you think that was a dream? Do you think that was a, a vision? Like what, what is your kind of thought uh, thinking about it a year later? So I, since then some, some interesting stuff has happened in our personal life that I can't get too deep into sure. involving my stepson and whatever, just because it's still an ongoing thing. But I, I think it, it's, I'm not going to say it's evil but it's some type of negativity that is attached to both me and my stepson. And I think there was a lot of jealousy attached to this negative entity. And that's why it kind of disguised itself as my son coming into the room. Right. Because it kind of put me into this vulnerable, yes. vulnerable state where I wasn't going to react or even look, you know, because he would come in every night. So it's not, it wasn't a big deal. And it just, that one screwed me up for a long time because yeah, did, I, I ran in. How, how long did it take you to fall back to sleep after oh, an experience like that? No, <laughs> I didn't no not after sleep. that. Oh my God. No, so, and again, so I don't know what time I fell asleep, but after this happened, it was right around like 3.15 in the morning when I finally came to and was able to like calm down and look at the clock. And again, my wife was asleep the whole time. She slept through the night, didn't hear anything. And now, I mean, I jumped off the bed. I ran in. I might have stepped on my stepson, <laughs> might have kicked the dog <laughs> running into his room, threw the door open, looked uh, like, and then I'm just kind of like pacing around the house. She stayed asleep the whole time. I didn't tell, I didn't even tell her about that. That happened in August of 2020. I didn't tell her till about like December that that yeah. happened. I just kind of blocked it out and. You know, you put, you chalk it up. You're like, okay, this is just a dream. This is, you know, it, it, it was a sleep paralysis thing. There was no greater significance to it, but you know, right around that time, my stepson's behavior started getting a little funky around the house. And then, you know, we're in the situation we are today, but 
still going through it, but I, I just have to think that there was some type of spiritual attack or something like that. Cause right. I, I, I just can't explain what that was. Man, that is, that's, that's wild. That's wild. Um, I mean, l- let me ask you, um, let me ask you this about ghosts and, and spirits and, and, and things to that effect. Do you, um, you know, mentioned, you know, mentioned about your brother, like had some, like someone in encounters with a, mm-hmm. you know, something, um, how do you lean when it comes to like earthbound spirits of people who have died that are like here on earth versus, um, I guess, cause my kind of take is, is I, I lean more on, on like, it's, it's more of like a, like, like what you saw, like a, a demonic or an evil type of presence, not necessarily a, a, a person's spirit trapped there. What do you have any specific lean on, on how you feel about that? It changes, you know, <laughs> changes yeah. like the weather, but I, I tend to agree more with that. Like, you know, if with that kind of Christian background and, you know, mindset, it's, I just don't believe that people stay here, you know? So right. anything that is kind of lingering here or disguising itself as something else. And it, I, I feel like it's negative, you know? It, yeah. Cause with my experiences, like anytime I've seen, uh, like dead loved one, I guess I could say, or, or something positive, it's always surrounded by light. You know, there's mm-hmm. always this overwhelming sense of being okay, you know, but I've had minor ghost experiences in the house we're in now and it creeps you out. I mean, you feel like there's a heaviness to it and I, I just don't see how that could be good in any way you right, know right, I, right i'm really big on like trusting your gut with this type of stuff and i don't know anytime i've had positive things it's always been very light and you can feel it there's an energy to it that you feel okay it's like mm-hmm. your intuition your gut is saying you're this is okay you can trust right. this but <clears throat> you know like my mother's had experiences where she's seen her father who died i, I never met him he died back in like 83, but she's had experiences where she's talked to him in dreams, but it's not really like him. And he, he died of a heart attack. And she said that in this dream, she asked him if, if it hurt when he died, like, was, was he okay? And she said in the dream, he came up and just touched her on the chest and she felt like she was having a heart attack. And then she woke up Wow! <laughs> from that dream. And I'm like, and it, she takes it as kind of like a positive experience, you know, like he, she showed me that it was quick and it was over and he didn't suffer. But I take that as like a spiritual kind of demonic attack. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm with you there because, um, and I think we're, we're so preconditioned with all of the movies and propaganda about ghosts that like, you know, we've seen this time and time again, you know, they repeat these movies and shows every single year about, people move into a house and there's something strange going on and something crazy, terrible activities went on there and people died and this and that, these spirits are, are trapped there. And it's like, in my opinion, it's a huge psyop for people that don't believe in the afterlife to say, uh, or something after this world to say like, listen, if you die, it's like, you're, you're still there. Like, um, because there's nothing else, outside right. of that you know what i'm saying so and and, and plus if, if anything they push in the movies and stuff it's like they're pushing that for for a certain reason so you so you wonder if like just like aliens right like if there right. were really aliens they're not going to look like these little green men with these huge eyes that's just right. not how that's a, like a fictionalized account of what um of making it you know cartoonish and it's the same and it's the same with with ghosts so i'm i'm, I'm with you on that page that it's more of a demonic evil type situation because like you know a lot of people have you know talked about going to, to psychics and this and that and they're able to talk to this or this person or see this person and it's like but i'm with you there about the experience with your mom like i don't think they're really seeing what they think they're seeing i think they're 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 being tricked and fooled and like they said you know satan is the ultimate lucifer is the, the, the ultimate deceiver you know and just look at the book of revelation the false prophet the antichrist will 
get millions of people to to believe that he's the right person. He's saying the right things and all this kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm really with you there on ghosts, quote unquote, being more or less uh, an, an evil, an evil spirit taking a form of something that you recognize. Yeah, and it might not even be evil. I, I just think of it as like frequencies, you know, like mm-hmm. it's because it's so hard to say, because if you kind of believe in like the simulation type theory or something like that, I can kind of see like, you know, maybe there's some type of residual energy or some type of buffering if you play like video games or rendering i should say right yeah Mm -hmm. who's to say that like a past program couldn't still be kind of stuck in this render and you just if you're kind of in tune to it you could catch a glimpse of it or something like that but then again it's like why would they mess with us then like there should be no reason for us to interact or anything like that so it's it's something i change my mind on like day to day but Right, I still right. tend to, just from personal experience, I tend to lean to, it's not something good or it's not something you really right. want to right. mess right. around with too much because it just, it's not that it's never ended well for me, but it's just the terror you feel like this weird heaviness. I mean, everyone's, I, I bet you everyone has felt you walk somewhere and you just feel that, you know, your, your neck kind of cringes up and you feel the hair standing up and it's just. It's hard to explain, but yeah. And I think the and I think the other the other psyop with, with movies and stuff is that when you have these ghost stories, these mortal humans, they're the ones that are able to purge and banish the spirits, right? Whereas I believe more in the line of what you were saying when you mentioned the name of Christ, a higher power, that was in effect what banished the spirit. It, it's nothing that us as mortal humans can do we don't we don't have the ability we're not we're not gods we're i mean we're we're supernatural beings but we are not we're not that so um i definitely think that's another psyop that they show us too is that anybody can you know banish these these ghosts and these demons stuff well it, it may be happening but i think you're you're being used as a as a conduit for for a higher power um working through you Right. I would, I would agree with that. I would just kind of push back a little bit and I would say that we do have the power to do it, but you need to have the right intention behind Correct. it. Correct. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. If you're just walking around you. your house with a stick of sage saying, go away, you know, it's not going to, it's not going to do anything. It's probably going to make it worse. And yes. <laughs> so, yeah. But if you're, I will agree with you there. Yeah. So I think as long as there is some type of positive intention saying like, you know, this i'm doing this because i don't want this here anymore i'm not trying to interact with these things i'm not trying to i just want to live a healthy life and protect my family you know like so right leave you know get out so right yeah i think as long as the intention is pure behind it which again kind of goes into that like christ consciousness thing if if you're doing this for a positive good reason yeah I, i think people can do it but if you're going around just waving sage in the air or doing something like you might right. be drawing more stuff in. <laughs> right. If you, if yeah. you have a T, if you have like a nationally syndicated TV show saying, Oh, we go and we do all this stuff. Like, come on, you're just yeah. doing it for the, you're just doing it for the money, for the clout. It's not really uh, there's no spirituality behind that. So dude, this has been um, incredible. We're going to have to talk. We're going to have to talk more. I'm sure you have more stories. And even oh, I yeah. want to hear a lot more about other stories of, of people that you've talked to because I know you've heard a lot of really, really good stories. Um, oh, we'll leave it on a, on, on a quick Star Wars note here. Um, okay. What's your favorite Star Wars movie and your favorite Star Wars character? Chewbacca is my favorite character. Well, Chewbacca and Yoda. But Chewbacca, just as like a little kid, I always used to call him Chewbacon for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> it's just always, he's just always been a cool one of my favorites and it actually ties into a question i was going to ask you since you live in yeah. ohio uh-huh. is what are your thoughts on bigfoot because chewbacca is very similar <laughs> to what could be bigfoot <laughs> well um a, a few a few things um gosh i've i've been starting to look into bigfoot a little bit and you know <laughs> you know when you talk about bigfoot with with kind of normal people they kind of give oh, you yeah. the okay whatever kind of vibe to it but you know there's been enough stories and encounters and things um that even with with you know aliens and abduction whatever that is maybe aliens are, are demonic or e- evil or different frequency like we've been talking about the ghost maybe that's 
and maybe that's similar with Bigfoot as well. But if, if, if anything, you know, I'm starting to come around to like the, uh, inner and it, it sounds crazy to say out loud but like no, the inner the interdimensional bigfoot aspect of, of that that he's more alien to this realm than than not because there's a reason kind of people see him and then he's like not there you know or because if, if you in, in like what people say like they would see him and then they forget to record or they forget to they don't think about it again or something like there's something there's something not of this world uh, about that. And is it, could it be a, could it be a psyop maybe, but um, I want, I, wa I want to believe it's real because it's uh it's very interesting. And, you know, one of my favorite movies ever is that Harry and the Henderson's movie yeah. from the, from terrible movie from the eighties. It's, it's just so, it's so funny. Um, but, you know, did you hear the story about when they were filming um, return of the Jedi in the Redwood forests? Uh, in the in in the eighties, no. they so since they were filming those scenes with the Ewoks, you know, in that big forest. So they actually that was when they did in California in the redwood forests, and they told the actor playing Chewbacca, like, listen, stay very close to the set, never go off set in your costume because you know that's the kind of area where people will be mounted up in the hills looking for stuff. You know, they're looking to bag a Bigfoot. So like they're like, listen, you could literally be shot and killed buy a bigfoot hunter if you if you leave the set i'm like that's that's pretty wild but then the other bigfoot thing too there was a um a st series of star wars comics and it was probably 10 or 15 years ago um where they basically took a lot of ideas and concept from star wars in like um like like what if scenarios you know, like th there's a big thing now like with the marvel stuff there's like this what if series that like talks about like the superheroes in different environments and, and mm -hmm. circumstances and things. So there's this comic series, like I think it was called like Star Wars Infinities. But what it was was um, Han Solo and Chewbacca like landed on Earth, mm -hmm. and like this was like a long time ago, and they got attacked by Native Americans or something, and Han Solo was killed by the Native Americans. But then Bigfoot in uh, I'm not Bigfoot Chewbacca in mourning he he went into the for he he went to live into the for in the forest for the rest of his existence and out of his sadness. And that was like the story of Bigfoot. Story like it Bigfoot. really, that's, it really was Chewbacca. That's interesting. It's just, <laughs> I've heard like people say, I forget who it is. I'd have to look it up, but someone either from NASA or an astronaut or something that said, you know, I've seen aliens and they, they look more like, you know, Chewbacca than, than like the little green people. And, that always stuck with me, and I think I may have had a Bigfoot experience, but we can save that for another time. <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll get all into that. Yeah, we'll definitely do that another time. So um, thank you so much for, for, for hopping on. I really, really appreciate it. This has been, this has been great. I, I, love, I love delving into a lot of these, these topics, and um, your stories are really, really fascinating. I've never heard anything like these, to be honest. So thank you for, for sharing this. Um, where can people... Um, find your content, social media, et cetera. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me, Kyle. Um, this is awesome. And yeah, my podcast is called Upstate Unconventional. It's on all the major platforms. Um, and the best way to get in contact with me is through Instagram at upstate underscore unconventional. If you guys have had a paranormal or unexplained or even just like a wild experience that you just want to talk about, just send me a message. And if you want to come on the show, we'll make it happen. Awesome. Well, this has been this has been great. Like I said, we're gonna have to talk more. We'll have to do an episode half Lord of the Rings, half Bigfoot. How about that? That sounds good <laughs> to me. Well, we should probably do several episodes on Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got a lot a... to say about that Hobbit movie. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll make a we'll make a podcast as long as the movies. That'll be about nine nine hours long. <laughs> what we'll, we'll is do? What is do a film commentary? Screw it. We'll so, do that. That'd be great. <laughs> but thank you again, Kyle. This was a lot of fun. Awesome. So for, for Nico and the Upstate Unconventional Podcast, this is Conspiracy Kyle. And this has been another episode of Conspiracy in the Force. And may the Force be with you. Stop.